Let me first lay out the problem for you. So here we have in our model, let's bring that up. All right. We have a table sourced from our system data. So account table, all of this mapping is coming from an official source. And as far as we're concerned, that's this access database. Great. So this account table is a lookup table to our data table connected to finance. And it provides us this mapping. It just happens that we're not happy with the mapping that it supplies. And we would like to see a few changes. We would like to group office supplies under office expenses. And we would like to club these two together as miscellaneous. Let's first look at the classic approach, right? So the classic approach would be that we would take a complete copy of the account table, somehow we'll get a copy, maybe query the database, and just dump it out, possibly in Excel, and then we'll just update the specific values that need to be changed. So we're just going to go ahead and just update that. And then we can switch and source the table from this new file. So what I've done is already have that file in here. That's the classic approach. And that is the file. And if you check in the queries here, what I've done is I've hacked the account table. And instead of pointing to the access database, which represents the system, I'm now pointing it to my manual table. And this does give me the end result. Office supplies is shown here. These two are clubbed under miscellaneous. Great. But of course, the challenge is that as the system data changes, as there are additions, modifications, deletions in this, it becomes really hard to maintain this table. So we were looking for a smarter approach. Now I have that file, the end result included in here as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to build that step by step. So let me close this. Uh, okay, that's the file I need. I'm going to close this classic approach. Don't want that. But I'm going to start here and build the modern approach from scratch. So first, what I need is this this new file. Now you do need a manual table, but you don't need a complete copy. So this is a smarter table. What it does is only retains uh, the items which have any exceptions to it. So it's much more compact, much easier to manage. And then we're going to smartly splice it together with our system table. So let's uh, go back to our log. And we have the account table here already. We're going to pull in that manual table. So classic modern approach. There we go. And that is our table. Click OK. Now we have that table. First thing I'm going to do, I certainly do not want to load it in Power Query. So I'm going to disable the load of this table. This is just uh, Lego blocks. I, I often think about uh, it that way when I'm building queries or even measures. So Lego blocks, I can combine these together. So account, I have this one. So what I'm going to do first is that the rows that are already coming in from the manual table, I don't want them in the account table. So I'm going to clean them out. And I'm going to do that using merge query. So I'm going to say merge with my manual table account key account key. But you might have just left this as default. If you click on the drop down, this has one of the options, which is left anti. Now, frankly, I don't care much about that terminology. I just read this text. So it says rows only in first. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So any rows which it finds in the second in, in the second table, I want those to be cleaned out. So I'm going to say left anti click and notice if you step back, I had 29 rows. And if you click here, notice it's 73, 74, and I think 78. That's the one coming in from my manual table. Those are gone. And that's what I want. So now that has been cleaned out, I can simply append my manual table to it without concern that it's going to be duplicates or something else. Now, of course, I could append it, then remove, then remove duplicates. However, then you don't have that much control always about which rows are being deleted. Is it deleting the system or the manual? Now, I'm not saying this is the only way to do it. There are multiple ways to do it. One of the ways that I uh, do is using custom column, um, which is kind of cool as well, some other day. But for now, we like this approach and I don't need this column. So I'm just going to remove it. And that's it. I'm going to say close and apply. All right. And somehow it's breaking my model. It just uh, I just need to go in and establish that connection again. So let me all right, there we go. Now it's connected. Perfect. So now office supplies is showing up under office expenses and miscellaneous. These two have been grouped together. So we have our answer, but we did it the smart way. We combined the system data 
and overlaid the manual data on it. So if there are any changes in the system data, any addition, modification, deletion, they're going to flow right through. Hopefully this video showed you a new cool way to do that. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to grab a copy of our best-selling book on Power Pivot and Power BI. And if you are looking to jumpstart the Power BI journey at your organization, reach out to us and learn about our training and consulting offerings. Power on, my friends.